You'll never win doing work that you hate. You'll never crush it on your podcast if you show up every day and you don't like the podcast, or you don't like the guest, you don't like what you're doing, which means you have to pivot. It may mean you, I don't know the backstory behind stopping We Do Hard Things and moving to to the, what's the new sales one called? What's this one called? How to Sell More. How to Sell More, right? Great, there's a story, right? I mean, at some point you stopped liking doing that, it wasn't working or or it ran out of time, or whatever, but it wasn't, okay, that's it, I'm done all podcasting, I'm never talking to anybody again, I'm just gonna go and do something else. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna launch a new show. And so everything has a time and place, but yeah, if I look at my calendar and, I, and I'm consistently not liking when something shows up, then you have to move on because you're not gonna win doing work that you hate. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because I need them. Because being around successful entrepreneurs who are pushing, who are driving, who are doing amazing things gives me that extra little motivational, inspirational boost in the morning every day to help me go off and accomplish great things too. And I hope that this video gives you that inspiration as well. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband, Evan Carmichael, in our take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. It's so easy to complain and, and it's a default mode. It's nice to think that it's the president's fault that you're not successful or your mom's fault or the school system's fault or you don't have enough money or whatever. It's, it's nice to think that that's the reason. And what that does is by blaming somebody else, it puts you in an unresourceful state. It means it's not your fault, so you don't have to fix it. It's your mom's fault. Mm -hmm. It's the president's fault, right? It's their fault. So I'm going to complain and be angry about it, but I don't have to do anything about it because it's not my fault. So it's when you say, okay, this is actually my responsibility. It may not be your fault, but it's your responsibility to fix it. Right. That I can get, I can get out of this. What that does is at the start is, well, that sucks. You know, it's because it's so nice to be able to blame somebody. Now this sucks that it's on me to go off and fix it. But then it's also the ultimate power in that you can change your circumstances. You can change your situation. You can make it better just by saying it's on me to fix it. Mm -hmm. Like there's no cavalry coming by by kicking the president out of office. It doesn't change your situation, right. you know. So so stop waiting for something else to happen. Like you are in charge. Uh, and so for for any spot in life, like you where you are where you are because of you. And I have a test that I call the mirror test where you walk in the mirror, go in the bathroom or wherever you have a mirror and ask yourself, why am I not more successful? Mm. Why have I not hit my goals? And whatever the first thing that comes back when you look in the mirror, those are the excuses that you need to bust through. Right. Because something's going to come up that's an excuse. It's a story you're holding on to. Uh, I don't have the right parents or I don't go to the right school or I don't know how to be charismatic or whatever. It's some. It's always some excuse. Um, and that's the one that you need to work on immediately to fix so you can go build that better life for yourself. The first person I hired was not in this YouTube business, but but way back in my first company. And it was for one hour a day. And I hired him to do one hour of work a day because it freed up about an hour and a half of my time per day. And I think, honestly, as soon as you can, you want to get somebody to help out. It does a couple things. One, it 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 really helps to not be doing this alone. Like it really <laughs> sucks to do everything all by yourself. Just the emotional, I mean, you guys have each other, which is great. It, like join a group, join a community, don't be alone. Cause it's really, really, really hard to be an entrepreneur and do it all on your own when all of those insecurities and fears and doubts and like I'm not good enough. And I was so dumb for starting this. And what was I thinking? And right. Uh, so it's, it's nice to have somebody who's doing this with you as opposed to you doing it all by yourself. Plus it's just smart in that you don't have to do all the work that you can delegate some of the tasks away to focus on whatever is, you know, more inside of your passion and what you love and, and what you can, you know, charge more for as well to build your company. I expect to fail all the time. I expect everything I do, especially at the beginning to not work. Right. If I'm launching something new, I just don't expect it to do well at the beginning because it's because creativity is messy and people put this label of perfection on it. I want it to be perfect, but you don't even know how to make it yet. So just get it out there. I value the momentum more than the perfection. And so I don't, if you're looking to believe that it's going to work out, that's a big picture macro concept that. Any video that I make on my YouTube channel may not work. And if it's a brand new thing, I expect it not to work. But it's the belief that if I keep going, 
it will eventually work. Right. That I'll figure it out. That right. I'll adjust. That I'll learn something. And I'll prove the next one. So I think people need to give themselves permission to fail at the beginning for it not to work out and to not take that personally. It doesn't mean that you suck just because your first song didn't hit it big. Mm. It just means you learned a little bit and keep going. And if you keep making new songs and every day you're practicing and trying to get better, eventually it will work out. And I just fully believe that I can do it, that you can do it, that everybody watching and listening can do it. People just quit too soon and they're trying to be too perfect until they never get to where they need to be. I think the, the ultimate resource is your ability to be resourceful. Um, the line that comes to mind is from Steve Wozniak, who co-founded Apple, who said, stop thinking about all the things that you don't have and instead think about what you can do with what you do have. And I think that's uh, an important line for any entrepreneur. It's easy to look at the million reasons why you're not going to win. There's a million reasons why you will not win. And, and you know, Gary and I can sit down and brainstorm a million more reasons why you're not going to win. Uh, but there's like eight why you will. And so all I do is focus on those eight and be as resourceful as possible on those eight. You don't, even now, if I'm trying to build my business, you know, I have 24 people on my team. I've had success with what I'm doing, but I don't have a thousand people on my team. And I can sit and complain around how I don't have a thousand people. Or I can say, well, I have 24. What can I do with my 24? And that's always the mindset. Think about what you can do with what you do have and understand that whoever your heroes are, whoever you look up to, whoever your role models are in life, whoever's had massive success, chances are they started with less than what you already have right now. Whether you're looking at Oprah or Richard Branson or whoever it is, they started with less than what you already have right now. And so if they could do it, you can too. The only difference is your willingness to be resourceful. We know what we sell. Perfect. Let's use social media to help us sell more of our stuff. Like the, the big reason why people quit is because you feel like you're wasting time making content and it's not generating any sales for you. And I'm mission first, purpose first. If anybody is familiar with my content, what I do, it's like purpose first and you have to make money because if you're not making money, you're going to quit on the thing. So how can we make money inside our purpose instead of having to have some job that's outside our purpose, right? So... The next thing to think about, if you know what you're selling or what you are looking to sell, right? Next is who are referral partners for us? So actually, Carms, if you look at your business, like who are the types of people who refer clients to you? Humans are built to serve. Because if you're not happy right now, it's because you're not serving. And that's, that's hardwired into us. Serving others, helping others hits the same part of your brain as having food and having sex. So it's, it's literally hardwired into you that you want to, you feel good by serving other people. So if you're not happy right now, you mentioned the word depression. If you're depressed and you're not happy, you're not serving either yeah. the world. Maybe yeah. you have a big mission or big vision or the 25 closest people to you. You don't have to have some giant mission, but you have to feel like you're serving the people who are closest to you. Yeah. Either one, if you're not happy, it's because you're not serving. And so the good news is you can always figure out a way to serve. Exactly. Exactly. And you can serve on a on a you know really deep level, which is what the book gets into of how to figure out yeah. how to how to serve exactly. But even just doing an act of kindness, even just doing one nice thing for somebody else, will will make you feel better. Ultimately, what I want people to do is, if you woke up and you felt like today mattered, like you woke up this morning and you felt like today mattered, you're going to make something today that matters. You're going you're gonna to create something today, whether that's a song or a video or artwork, like you're creating. When you're creating something that has the potential to impact somebody else's life, if you did that every day, you're, you're on a path to happiness. I think everybody has an agenda for you. Uh, your parents, your friends, your family, your kids, like everybody has an agenda for you. And if you don't, understand what your agenda is for yourself, then you'll just be pulled in a thousand different directions and never accomplish anything that you actually want to go off and accomplish. And so chances are, whatever the thing is that you have greatness in, whatever you have Michael Jordan level talent at, uh, it's going to make some people upset, you know, even out of love, like saying that you want to go off and do this, but uh, your parents don't think that that's the right thing for you or, or nobody in your family has ever done it. It's easy for them to pull you down and, and prevent you from going off and doing the thing that you actually want to do. And so the common trait of everybody who's had massive success 
is being able to deal with the people around them, telling them that their ideas suck, that it's never going to work, and you still get up and you go and you do it anyway. For a lot of people, the advice that your parents are giving you is out of love. They love you. They just see success differently. They grew up in a different world. And so success to them looks one way and you're off doing this crazy other path. And so they just care about you and they're trying to do the best thing that they think is for you. But the the worst advice you can give somebody is what you would do in a situation. Mm. That's the worst advice you can give them. Here's what I would do. Well, who cares what you would do? You're not me, <laughs> right. right? But like never get like the best advice you can give is try to understand that person and give them the answer that will help them, even if it's not the same thing that you would do. Right. And so I think a lot of people, that's the real trouble spot where there's people who love you, who are trying to help you and they think they're helping you, but they're not um, because that's what they would do. The thing that anyone who follows you online will say is that you are definitely consistent. How much do you think that has played into the success that you have today? I think a lot. I was doing an interview earlier today and uh, somebody was saying that I was really bold. Like, you're such a bold, courageous person. I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel that bold, but I am consistent. We started in 2009 and I don't think I've missed an upload in a decade. And so, you know, tons of videos just consistently going up. So uh, yeah, I'm the guy who did not start super well at the beginning. I had 25 subscribers in year one and 2,000 subscribers in year five. And uh, fast forward today and you know, I've had a lot more success since then. But just waking up every day and doing the work and amazing things can happen. I think we want to progress. We want to grow. We want to learn. We want to improve. I think if there's nothing in your calendar that scares you, that doesn't give you a little bit of anxiety, then I think you hate your life. It means you're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. There's nothing new. Mm. And you don't like your life if you're not progressing and learning and growing. Um, so anytime you have that idea of something that you want to do and then your heart's beating and you're, you're nervous, I, I think that's go time. I think that means you have to go start it and try to chase it down and constantly battle the the lack of belief and the voices in your head to go do the next thing. I, I think that's, I think anybody who doesn't have that is not doing anything big and is not challenging them, themselves to grow. Most entrepreneurs spend way too much time doing things that barely matter. You're working hard, you're grinding every day. It's not that you're not trying, it's that you're spending your time doing activities that are not moving the business forward enough. We need to play bigger and focus on the right things because you cannot be in the same spot that you're in today one year from now. This video is gonna help. So I've got a friend of mine going through this right now, an entrepreneur, she's, she's an amazing entrepreneur. I wanna see her win so badly and, and she has this very clear path to what she needs to do. Very clear, you have to do this. You gotta talk to these people. This will move the ball forward. This is all you need to be spending your time on. Reach out to these 50 people and you will start to accomplish success. And she's afraid. She's afraid that she doesn't have the answer. She's afraid that it's not gonna work out. She's afraid they're not gonna pick up the phone. She's afraid, she's just afraid. And so she's consuming herself with busy work. She's consuming herself with tasks that do move the ball, but in tiny little increments. That post in a social media and that touching base with someone in the team and that logging into the CRM, all these things that probably should happen but aren't really difference makers for her business, that's what she's spending her time doing. So she can pat herself on the back and say, look at me, I'm, I'm busy, I'm doing work, I'm, I'm crushing. I went in and I checked everything off my list today, except the thing that mattered most, except the thing that will actually push your business forward. And everybody around her, this is likely the challenge for you, everybody around her is looking to her as a leader, is looking to her as this ambitious, go-getter, working hard person. Nobody around her is saying, listen, what you're spending your time on is ridiculous, is not where you need to be putting your efforts. And so she's stuck in this, in this plain small mode, in this land of excuses, where yes, she's being massively productive, but she's not doing enough to move her business forward. And one year from now, she's gonna be in a similar spot, slightly ahead because she was too afraid to take action on the things that she needs to take action on. But now she's got me <laughs> and I'm on her every day to say, how are we doing on that list? How are we doing on that list? How And suffocating the excuses. Cause I'm not buying the excuses. Cause I know she's capable of more. Cause I'm not gonna allow any out possible because everybody in her life, everybody in your life might be letting you off the hook. 
thinking you're out there working hard, doing the right things, but you are not. And you need either the self-discipline to do it or somebody amazing in your life to say, I am not allowing you to play small anymore. It's okay to be afraid. It's not okay to let that fear stop you. Because until you start focusing on the things that will actually grow your business forward, you will never accomplish the success that you are after. If you are doing something new, you are going to get rejected. If you're doing something that you're not good at yet, you are going to get rejected. If you're doing something that goes against the status quo, you are going to get rejected. So you have two choices. Live a life with zero growth and never get rejected or chase your dream, deal with the rejection that comes and go change the world. I have rejection all the time in my life uh, from little rejections of making videos that don't pop to bigger rejections of projects that I care deeply about that just don't fly and people don't accept at the beginning. I look, I look at this, Built to Serve. This is a great example. Built to Serve is my new book. This book I'm insanely proud of. I think it's life-changing. I mean, it should be. I think the work that you create should be life-changing, but I poured so much into this and I think people need to read it. Like, I, I desperately think that this book will change a lot of people's lives. It could change your life. I, I believe it's not just hyperbole. Like I, I truly fundamentally believe it. When I came up with the idea, I was on my tour earlier this year and I did not have time to write it, right? I, I was on my tour, I'm behind on everything million things being thrown at me, meeting people, doing my events, seeing the cities. And it just, I just decided I have to write this book because of all the feedback I was getting from people. It was all the one-on-ones I was doing with people. The same questions kept coming up. How do I find my purpose? How do I know who I am? How do I turn into a business? And so that's the, that's the point of the book, figuring out what your purpose is and how to use that to then serve the world, right? It's called built to serve and make it into a business. So you can make money doing it and, and build a team and go off and live your mission. When I first pitched my publisher on it, they didn't want it. They didn't want my book, right? So uh, your one word is down here. That's with Penguin Random House and Penguin Past. So they had first my first deal with uh, Penguin Random House. Typically how they'll do deals, especially with first time authors, is you get, you get a deal and then they have the right of first refusal on your next book. So as soon as I get my next book, they get the right to look at it first before I give it to anybody else, right? And so that's why I signed. So like, okay, here we go. Let's go, it's a perfect fit. It, I mean, it follows really nicely with your one word. Let's go, right? And they said, uh, no, we're gonna pass. I'm like, what? How do you pass? This is better than your one word. I mean, I love your one word, it's great. But this is, this is, this is the whole thing. How do you pass on this? Um, it's just, and we had to wait because it's 30 days and all these, anyway, legal stuff. Um, so then we started looking at other companies. We started looking at other publishing houses. And there were other ones that seemed to line up really well with the content that they had, the, the, the author lineup that they had. And almost everybody, everybody except the last one, right, uh, said no. And, and I mean, like, I got, a, I got a big YouTube channel. We have momentum. We already have our first book. We're like, why? why? And all sorts of different reasons, you know, um, just not not doing personal development books anymore, not whatever. Uh, nobody came out and said like, we hate you Evan, so maybe, <laughs> hopefully that's not the reason. Um, and then we found one that that picked it up. It's like, okay, let's go. And if, if that one didn't pick it up, then, then we would have kept looking for more publishers or I would have just made it myself. Just self-publish it, put it out, right? What do you do when the people around you don't accept what you have, when you want to take something in a new direction? I could have done something else. I could have done something easier. If I just did a, a book about Jack Ma, right, and his rules for success, that would be easier to pick up than this, which I talk about on the channel, but it's not the main thesis of the channel. But that's what I want to make, and that's what I'm going to make. Whether it's I get a publisher or we're going to you know, create it myself, it's going to be birthed into existence because I decided so. And just taking that mindset and approach, you have to. If you love the thing, if you're doing something different, then you have to keep going when people say that, I don't want to pick it up, that it sucks, that it's stupid, that you're, maybe it's even a great idea, but you're not the person who's going to do it, right? You have to keep going. I'm really introverted. <laughs> it doesn't come across, right? But I am, I'm really introverted. Uh, I don't talk to people on the airplane next to me. Is, is Justin in the house? There's Justin. So <laughs> I sat next to Justin on the airplane. <laughs> on the way down. So you should just tell it as a theoretical example, but I actually sat next to somebody on the airplane, Justin, and he's trying to make small talk. And uh, 
I wasn't trying to be rude, just I, small talk makes me anxious. Like, it gives me crazy anxiety. And so I remember everything he said. I remember he woke up at 4 a.m. to catch a 6 a.m. flight, to get in at 2 a.m. here with me. He likes his coffee, decaf, with one sugar and one cream. <laughs> he has a, a black leather Toomey bag. And so, like, I remember all this stuff, but we didn't really talk. Like, that's pretty much all we talked about on this five-hour flight down from Newark to here. And so I, I, I just get super anxious when doing small talk and networking. Uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm scared to make videos. So on my YouTube channel right now, have you guys watched some of my videos on YouTube? Okay, decent, all right. Um, I've got 6,000 videos recorded on my YouTube channel. Wow. Two million subscribers, 300 million views, all organic. I'm the organic guy. I'm, these guys are pros at paid ads. I'm not fantastic at that, but organic, I'm, I'm your guy. And I still get afraid to turn on the camera and press record. 6,000 videos later, because, because I want to be an icon too, and I want to get my message out. And every video that I make, I want it to be the best I've ever done. But I'm still afraid to go out and make the content. Being on stage always gives me crazy anxiety, right? Uh, I was speaking a couple weeks ago in Whistler, and the speaker before me was David Goggins. You know David Goggins? He's like the most intense human alive. <laughs> crazy Navy SEAL ninja. Uh, and then the guy after me was football player Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was that. So it's like David Goggins, me, Peyton Manning. <laughs> All right, right? Like <laughs> boom, 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 right? Uh, and in all honesty, last year when I spoke at Growth, I, I had the biggest panic attack of my life backstage. It's 10 minutes before going live. There's this big wind up and lead up and like, just bring me out, just bring me out, just I can't wait to go. And, and my heart's going like crazy and uh, I just forgot how I was going to start my presentation. Right? I just, I just blank. Have you guys had that happen where you're like, you're about to get on a call or a presentation and you just, you had it all down, you practiced a thousand times but then you just go blank? Great, that was me. Just before I about to come up and speak to, you know, a couple thousand people. It was the first time I was going to, uh, I met Brendan so, you know, he invited me out. I, I, we connected through Ethan. It was the first time I met him. He was doing an interview backstage, and he said, hey, Evan, I'm going to end my interview because I want to make sure that I'm watching your presentation. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Come on, really? Can't you just, like, have a coffee or something backstage? But it's, but it's great. And he's going to give me feedback. I go, oh, my God, okay. I'm, I'm, re I'm ready for the feedback. And so I get on stage and, and do my thing. But just before that, what got me over it was I took a little peek behind the curtain, and I saw a bunch of you guys. And I reminded myself that I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. Right? Don't be so selfish. Right? Yeah, you can cut that up. It's not about me. It's about the message. And so the reason why, and even this, even this lead up here, I'm sitting backstage. Ethan's like calming me down because my heart's going crazy. Brendan is talking about the genius ideas that I told him backstage. Like, oh, my God, Brendan, look at the setup. Oh, I better deliver. And I tell you this because I've seen a lot of people from the Arizona event. I got stopped a lot over the past couple of days, and they said, Evan, I loved your, your speech. It was amazing. Like, oh, thank you. Did you start your channel? Where is it? It's like, oh, no, I haven't done it yet. I'm like, what? That was how many months ago? You loved my speech. What happened? And at the end of the day, it's just fear. You can come up with a really logical reason why you haven't posted yet, but really you're afraid that it's not perfect. You're afraid that nobody's going to watch it. You're afraid that people are going to watch it. You know, you're afraid you don't know the technology. You don't know the gear. You don't know the team. You're just afraid, 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 and we cover it with the reason why we can't do it, right? But really it's just fear. And so I wanted to share my fear with you because you might look at Dean and Brendan and, and all these mentors that you have, and they come on stage and they just look amazing. And you're like, well, I can never be like that. But at least for my story, I'm always scared right? Like, I'm always playing anxious and nervous. I think if you don't have anything that makes you anxious or nervous in your life, then you hate your life, right? Because then you're just staying inside your comfort zone. You know exactly what to do. You're photocopying your life over and over and over again. And so life isn't about having no fears. It's about conquering the fears. What, what Dean said yesterday about having the courage to jump out of the helicopter, right? To be like on the edge here of the helicopter or the plane and say, I'm going to jump to have the courage to do that. That's what you guys need to do. And why I share it is because the biggest reason why you guys aren't taking the action on the most logical opportunity, the biggest opportunity in front of your face right now is just because of fear.
Whenever I get an idea, I have to do something immediately. Trust your ideas, believe that they're amazing and, and manifest them into the world. I love it. I'm not taking it from the approach of, I want this book to be a New York Times bestseller and I'm sitting there visualizing my book being a New York Times bestseller. Uh, I'm not visualizing myself being on Brendan Burchard's stage in Puerto Rico to a couple thousand people. Uh, that's not the process that I typically go through, although I'm open to that maybe being a mistake. I don't know. It, it, it's never really felt like it's worth it. I don't know, I'm sitting there, I've done it many times, sitting there visualizing, I've never really felt like that made a difference. I'm open to being totally wrong. But how I do apply it and it's massively seen an impact is as soon as I get an idea for something, it's, it's go time. Trust that vision that came to you, trust that idea that's in your head and do something immediately about it. When I thought about the idea of, of having a house, of building a custom home, I then went off and built the 5,000 square foot custom home. Like inside of the year, we had the whole thing done. When I thought about si silly things, like I thought about having a mannequin. I was watching Green Arrow on TV and I loved how they all had their, their mannequins when they were in their, their layer or their realm. They had their outfits, their costumes on a mannequin. And I thought, I feel like I'm, I'm the Green Arrow. I'm, I got the deep hood. Look, I could be, this is, this is the Believe Arrow, right? Uh, I want a mannequin too. And then inside of a week, I had my own mannequin here. And so it may seem crazy, it may seem wild, but that's how I tend to operate. And I think it's amazing. Right now, I'm thinking about doing a 30 day challenge on my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel, where every day for the next 30 days, I have a series of videos to help you build a better life. So like 30 days to a better life. And it's gonna be some of our best work. And I thought of the idea and now immediately we're doing it. And so, trusting the ideas that come to me and then immediately creating them and I guess manifesting them to the world, I am a thousand percent all in on. The sitting and visualizing the thing that I want, I have a struggle with and I'm open to um, making it better and, and being changed. Where I face the hardest time with this is my health. So I broke my neck last year, right? I wore this for, for uh, 60 days taking it off for 10 minutes a day. That was it. And I had a concussion and I had two spots in my neck that were broken. And I did some meditation with a guy named Michael Edwards who led me through this guided meditation and he helped me and he was doing it with me in person uh, over, over the phone, sending me videos. And first off was getting the concussion away because I'd never had a concussion before. And the meditation I found really helped the concussion. The second part was the visualization. So I have a bone in the back of my neck that broke off. So the big bone broke and is healed. The little bone just kind of broke off, like the tip. Like imagine, I guess, the fingernail kind of hanging loose, right? And it broke off. And the doctor said it's not gonna come back together. And, and it's not worth going and doing surgery on it because it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. And Michael was convinced that I could heal myself and I could make that bone come back together. And so every uh, night and every morning, I would do it twice a day, meditating and visualizing the neck coming back together. And, and you know, take some, you know, hand sanitizer, or, uh, not hand sanitizer, take some lotion and, and, you know, put it on my neck. And just as I'm to get more tactical, like as I'm doing it, the, the bones connecting. I talked to John Asaraf, who is a, another you know, legendary expert in his field, and he's, he's fully convinced that it can come back together through visualization, through meditation. I haven't done it yet. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't cracked the code on how to do it. I wish I did. We did x-rays uh, 60 days later, and it's still just as disconnected. It's still just as, it didn't move uh, a centimeter, a millimeter closer. And that was honestly a little bit, uh, you know, negative or low or defeating. And, and my motivation to do it as intensely has, has waned. I haven't been doing it twice a day, every day. I still want to believe that it's possible. And I still kind of believe that it's possible. And maybe that's not enough. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, maybe the problem was I never believed enough that it could happen and that's why it didn't happen. So I would, I would love for that to work. I would love for meditation to work. I've, I've meditated with I don't know how many different people, so many different people. I've never really felt the benefit um, of having a meditation. It just feels like I'm like I'm sitting down. Nothing wrong with it. Just I don't feel extra clarity or anything coming out of the meditation. So I believe that it has worked for other people. I believe that it can work for me. I haven't found the path to make it work. 
So that's where I'm still struggling and trying to improve and trying to get better and reaching out to experts and why I still feature people on my channel because I'm trying to learn through the process as well. But but the idea of taking the ideas that do come to you and taking immediate action on them, right? The last letters of, of law of attraction is action, doing something, trusting them. I think a thousand percent that can serve you. It has served me. I know for sure it can serve you to learn to trust your ideas and do something immediately today about it and then build momentum towards it. And that big crazy thing that you have in your mind may not even be that big and crazy once you actually start taking some action on it. And so that part I'm a thousand percent down on and you need to do something today in your life to change. <laughs> and the other side, I'm totally open to feedback, suggestions on how I can get better, how you can get better. I think everybody can can lean in and learn whatever they want to learn. Um, I had the good fortune of having some great parents. They're on, the, they're on their wall behind me here. I'm eight or nine years old, and those are my parents there. And they would always tell me, hey, you're having this really hard, Michael, like you do anything you believe that you can. And so they helped instill that in me. Um, I think the whole, you know, to Gary Vee's point about, are you born with it? Well, what were you doing at seven years old? Like, were you doing lemonade stands and garage sales and taking some initiative? Um, but if you weren't, don't feel like, oh my gosh, now I can't be an entrepreneur. It's, it's so much easier now than ever to start your own business or to lean in on the thing for sure. Like, I believe everybody's got Michael Jordan level genius at something. Like, you're the greatest in the world at something. And you just don't believe that you are and you don't believe in your dreams enough to go chase them down. But you can, whether it's being an entrepreneur and believing in your business, whether it's believing in your health journey and that is possible, whether it's, you know, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro or losing 100 pounds or like whatever the thing is that you'd love to do. It's it's possible. People like you have done it. And that's where a lot of people get stuck is like, well, it's possible like somebody else has done it, but I can't do it because I'm whatever. And my story early with the YouTube stuff was, um, I'm an introvert, I'm shy, so I'm, I'm not going to make it, you know, but I'll keep making content because I'm serving, but I'm, I'm just never going to be the big name because I'm too introverted and too shy. And I still am, by the way, it just doesn't come out when I'm doing shows like this. Um, but you can, you know, you can, whatever, whatever that story is in your head, it's totally fixable. And other people, you know, like you have done it. And it just, comes down to starting to change what you put into your head. I think that's the biggest thing of all. That's why I make so much content. Because if somebody felt like their health journey was impossible, you know, it's like, you know, Jay, you don't understand. Uh, it was impossible. You know, it's like, you know, Jay, you don't understand. Uh, I've been like this and my family has been like this and it's just not possible. And I've tried a million things and just nothing works. And it's, it's never going to happen, Jay. Just, that's, that's who I am, right? If they spent a month with you, you know, because you're more confident in their ability to get healthy than they are in their inability to get healthy. And same thing with me. If somebody's hanging out with me for an extended period of time, if we were hanging out together, uh, I'm going to get a lot healthier, probably. <laughs> and you're going to be making more YouTube videos, man. And we're going to get you on there and, and crushing it because whoever's more confident wins. And so the problem is we're surrounded by people who don't believe in our dreams, who tell us that it's not possible. And we're also feeding our mind with things that keep us stuck where we are. And if you want to change something, it's totally possible, but it starts with actually changing um, that environment so that you have a, you have the crutch like to get going, to get you out of the starting gate. It may not be your fault, but it's your responsibility. It's not your fault that you were born broke, but it's your responsibility to fix it. It's not your fault that you had no education, but it's your responsibility to learn it. It's not your fault that you had no connections, but it's your responsibility to make them. It may not be your fault, but it's your responsibility. And the sooner you accept that, the sooner you're gonna win. So I recently posted to my YouTube community tab a quote about momentum. I think people don't have momentum, and I think the path to get momentum is to do work for free for ideal clients until you can prove your value and then they pay you. So here's what I wrote. I wrote, if you have no momentum, no traction, no clients, and start for free, prove your worth and build momentum. Give them something they can't wait to have again and pay for this time, hashtag believe. And every time I write, there's always tons of great positive feedback, but, but this time somebody wrote a, a kind of negative comment. And so I wanted to read it because it's highly applicable in this video. He said, Kitch, I don't know about some of your advice. Everything is my fault and work for free. To which I reply, yes, when you embrace those two, you'll start crushing your goals. 
it's a hard message to, to take on, right? Whether everything is your fault, everything is your responsibility, where you are right now, it's not about beating yourself up. It's not about saying, I suck and I can't get out. It's saying, listen, this is what happened to me. That's the past. The past doesn't have to equal to the future. Everything that I was born into and, and the circumstances that I grew up with, they don't have to be where I go going forward. Look at all your heroes. Look at the people who've made huge inroads, changed the world, the people that you look up to and aspire to be like. Very few of them were born super wealthy. Most of them had a, a worse upbringing than you did and they could make it, so why can't you? You're just locked in your story. Too many people are locked into their story. They're not taking responsibility. They're not saying, this is my, my problem to get out of. I wasn't put here, right? You've been drafted into a war that you did not start. You were put here and you have to survive. And then you have to learn to thrive. And it's that decision that you are in charge, that you're responsible, that if you go to the mirror and you say, why am I not achieving my goals? Why am I not further ahead? As long as you're blaming somebody else, that might keep you comfortable. It keeps you comfortable. It means you don't have to do anything, right? You're not winning because your mom you know, hit you. You're not winning because your dad never supported you, right? You're not winning because the school system sucks. As long as it's somebody else to blame, it's, it's comforting. And everybody else around us are, are doing the same thing. Nobody's taking accountability. Everybody's saying it's somebody else's fault, right? Of course. It's not your fault that you're losing because then you have to do something about it. And even if you're not losing, you're not hitting the goals as hard as you should. And it's so much easier to put the blame on somebody else and say, well, it's, it's that person's fault. Where really, it's a person in the mirror. It's you, it's me. I am not further ahead in my business, on my YouTube channel, not because of the YouTube algorithm, not because my team didn't deliver the right video on time. Me, I'm the problem, it's my fault. It's my responsibility, right? I have to go fix it. I created this mess, <laughs> it's not a mess, it's amazing, but I'm not at 10 million subscribers because of me. It's not that people don't wanna watch the content and people don't wanna be inspired. It's me. I need to get better. I need to improve. And, and even if it wasn't my fault, just taking that on gives you hope that you can change it. And as soon as you start putting, not even the blame, I think blame is not, I don't think blame helps. I, I don't care who's to, who to blame. I care how do we fix it, right? If there's a problem that happens in my business, it's not like who screwed up. I don't care who screwed up. I care what are we gonna do to make sure that we can get out of this hole and then it doesn't happen again the next time, right? Taking personal accountability for where you're at. If you have not hit your goals, this is good news, you can. But nobody's coming to save you. Nothing's gonna magically change around you. You, you're the change, you will make the change. You can go make it happen. If I wanna grow my business bigger, I need to accept that I need to grow bigger. Me, personally, Evan Carmichael. I, it is my fault, it is my responsibility. I am to blame. And use that as a kick forward to say, great. Like at the beginning it may suck. Say, so, oh man, I've wasted how many you know, weeks, months, years going down the wrong path. Just casting blame on other people, realizing now it's my fault. Okay, well, what can you do about it? Now you can change it. Like at, at the start, the, reali the realization sucks, but then it's also the greatest thing of all time. If you're coming out of, from under the rock and realize, oh my God, this is all my fault. That gives you the power to fix it. Because as long as you're relying on somebody else to do something and they don't show up, you can constantly blame them, but you're never growing. You're never accomplishing anything because you're waiting for them. You don't have to wait for anybody. It's just you and you can fix it. You have the strength, you have the power, you're Michael Jordan, you have the abilities, you have the skill set. And if you don't have it yet, you can develop it. You can acquire it because your heroes did it and you can too. Success equals habits. If you are not reaching the goals that you have for your business and your life, it's because you are not doing the right habits consistently. I say consistently because you are what you consistently do, not what you kind of do. If you run a kinda gotta do schedule, then you're gonna have a kinda okay life and a kinda okay business. I wanna change that in this video. So I live by my calendar. I think it's one of the greatest tools you can ever have that when you have something that you wanna accomplish in your life, in your business, that it's in your calendar. Because if it's not in your calendar, it just remains one of these someday I will do something. But you never actually take action on it. And, and it's one of the biggest mistakes that people make after getting inspired, motivated. You watch a video like this, you go to a conference, you listen to a podcast, like that was amazing, so much fire. And you might be on fire for the rest of the day, but then you don't follow through because it's not in your calendar. Show me your biggest goals in life and business. Show, tell me what they are. If I was gonna charge $100,000 for an hour of coaching with you, right? 
This is what I would focus on. What are your big goals? And show me in your calendar where you are spending your time. For too many people, they don't line up. For too many people, they have these ambitions and great ideas, but they just state ideas and ambitions because it's never actually in your calendar. And so if you don't put the big things in your calendar, you don't have to accomplish them. The little things will take over your life. For too many of us, the little things have taken over. And it's not that they're not important because they are, but small in importance. And so you can tell yourself, I did, I did so much, look at how much I did. But then you look back on the week, it's like, what did I actually do? I was busy the whole week, but did I move forward any of my goals or ambitions? Probably not. This is a problem. So for me, I like having different things on different days. On Tuesday, I, I make videos. This is, this is a Tuesday for me. This video may not be released on a Tuesday, but I'm recording it on a Tuesday. Because Tuesday, I am making YouTube videos because I want to grow my YouTube impact. Because I want to reach 500 million people, a billion people, right? I want to reach the world. And I think YouTube's the best way to do it right now. And so. Great, it's amazing to have that ambition. Show me in your calendar where you're spending your time. Well, all day Tuesday, I'm making videos. Wednesday is my project day. Thursday is my public facing interview day. Friday is my CEO day. Saturday is my fun day with my wife, right? It's, this impacts your personal life as well. Saturday, I'm, I'm planning the entire day for my wife that has fun surprises where there's no work happening, not even going to Costco. Like, no, Costco is not fun <laughs> for me. So we're not going to Costco. Sunday is family admin day where that's Costco day. That's buy, buy a new couch day. That's do the laundry day. That's whatever needs to be done for the family. And then Monday is mentoring day, spending that with my team, right? I look at my calendar and this is what you can do. Look at your calendar every week and see what's ahead for the week. Is there a structure to it? If you looked at that calendar and stepped above it and said, if I did these things, will I move closer to accomplishing my goals? Will I make progress? It's not that you're going to hit your goal by just spending a week working on something. You won't. But will you make progress towards it? Is there growth? Is there achievement happening? And for too many people, it's a no. And I think you should change that. Nobody wakes up every day and says, this is going to be the greatest day ever. Not Dan Locke, not Evan Carmichael, not Tony Robbins, nobody. You wake up and you're tired and you have stuff in your eyes and you have lines on your face from the pillows. The difference between successful people is that they demand excellence from themselves to the habits and routines that they do daily. The problem is that thinking that these people are different, that if you're not waking up with tons of motivation ready to take on the day, that something is wrong with you. The only thing that's wrong with you is you don't have the habits that set you up for success every single day and today, I want to change that. So I have a 5S morning routine that I go through every single day that sets me up for success, that demands excellence I'm going to share with you guys today. The first S is sing. The fastest way to change your state is to put on music. The fastest way to go from feeling low energy, tired, bored, into an energy of I am ready to go is music. Put on the song, not that makes you feel the current way that you're feeling. This is where most people mess up. You put on music for how you're currently feeling. If you're feeling really sad and low energy, you're gonna put on really mellow, slow music. What does that do? It keeps you in the same state that you're in. It, it keeps you exactly where you are. What you wanna do is put on the music for how you wanna feel. And so I have a playlist on my main channel called the Believe Playlist, which is the songs that I listen to. These are the songs that I listen to every day they may work for you, they may not work for you. There's no perfect song for everybody. This is the perfect song for you. And so build a playlist of the songs that make you come alive. Here's the criteria. If this song came on, it would force you to start moving. If the song came on, you find yourself doing this. If the song came on, you would get out of your chair and want to move around. Doesn't mean you're going to dance like crazy. Doesn't mean you're going to start building out the lyrics. That may be you. Awesome. But if you're a little more introverted or don't like to dance, something that would make you move, something that would get you at least in your chair doing this. That's what I want. Make a playlist and put that on. It's the first thing that you do every single morning. It'll make a huge difference to setting the tone, changing your state and giving you energy and momentum to start the day. S number two is sun. I like getting outside. I think there's something about getting outside of your home, of your condo, your apartment, getting outside, getting some fresh air, just being out in nature makes a big difference. Getting some, getting some vitamins on your face from the sun outside, but also signifying that you're, you're leaving your bedroom. You're leaving the condo, the apartment, the home. You're leaving what happened last night and you're ready to go off and start the day. This is especially important if you're working from home because it's easy to, have your you know office right next to your bedroom or maybe your office is your bedroom 
and carry that bedroom energy, that tired, I just woke up, I wanna stay in bed, I wanna sleep energy into your work and you won't do great things if that's the energy you're carrying to your work. So having some kind of ritual that splits up sleeping energy to I'm ready to go energy makes a big difference and I find the easiest way to do it is to get outside and get some sun. Bonus points if you're in a condo or apartment to take the stairs instead of the elevator. S number three is soar, and this is the most important thing for me. If you only take one of the five, I think this is the most important one to take. What is the thing that makes you soar every day? What's the thing that makes you feel alive, bold, confident? What is that? And put it into your morning routine. At some point in your life, you felt bold. You felt unstoppable, you felt confident. It's happened to everybody. The problem is you don't feel that way consistently every day. You go through these bursts, these moments of, man, I could do such amazing things, but then the next day you wake up and you're a different person. You're back to the, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know, who am I to go do this crazy thing? That's the problem. So whatever the thing is that makes you feel like you can come alive, that gives you that boldness and confidence, plan it with intention every single day into your morning routine. For me, what I do is I record a message on my phone to, to Instagram, to my stories, to I put it to LinkedIn and Twitter. Right now I'm putting it everywhere, but I need to make a message. So I, th I think of somebody that I helped yesterday. I think of somebody who commented on a video, who I met in person, who I coached on my Instagram live, somebody that I helped yesterday. And then I make a message channeling that person. I won't say the person's name, but I, I have them in my head. That I need to remind myself that the work that I do is important. It's easy to get lost in the numbers. It's, it's hard to imagine that two to 300,000 people watched my videos yesterday. That's crazy. It's a wild number, right? It's wild. It's hard to, like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I'm just sitting here talking to a camera in my office and two to 300,000 people are watching my videos. It's crazy. I need to think down to the actual person. I need to think about an individual that this matters to somebody, that the work I do really means something to them. And then I need to record a message and share. That helps me soar and I do it every day. What is the thing for you? What makes you soar? Maybe it's watching the 254 series that I put up every day. Maybe it's watching the Inspresso videos like this that I put up every day. And some people, every day, this is part of the morning routine is watching an Inspresso video and I'm humbled to be part of your morning routine. For other people, it might be meditating. It might be watching a video. It might be reading a book, listening to a podcast. I don't care what the thing is but you have felt bold, unstoppable, and confident at some point in your life. What led you to feeling that way and then demand it of yourself every day by putting it into your morning routine? The third S is sore, it's the most important one. The fourth S for me is sweat. This is just about being healthy, having a healthy lifestyle, and I wanna do something that makes me sweat. So whether it's a HIIT workout, a cardio workout, a weights workout, I put that into my daily routine because I wanna bust a sweat and I wanna stay healthy into my 40s which is coming up and then into my 50s and beyond and then the last s for me is scare i want to do something every day that scares me what i'm doing right now is i take a cold shower so after sweating i need to have a shower don't want to show up to work all smelly and so I hop in the shower but right away start turning the colder and colder and colder and colder and colder and then right at the very end i go all the way cold and i freeze and even just thinking about right now it sucks which is the best Right, you wanna do the thing that scares you every day. You're teaching yourself that I do scary things. So whatever is scary for you, whether it's taking a cold shower, whether it's making a phone call, whether it's sending an email, making a video and posting it, doing scary things, teaching yourself, getting that out of the way right from the beginning, I find really helps me. You are not that different than your heroes. The people who you look up to, respect, watch their videos of, listen to their podcasts, read their books, there's not that big a chasm between who they are and who you are. There's a tendency to look at these People have had ginormous success and say, well, they're just built differently. They're wired differently. I'm not like them. And that mindset, that way of thinking, for you to say that I'm just so different from them is keeping you safe and small and not realizing your potential. The only difference between your heroes and you is the willingness and ability to step into the discomfort. They were willing to do it. You haven't yet. And we're going to change it in this video. So on Monday, I was meeting with Alex, who helps me run Toronto Dance Salsa. And he's an amazing entrepreneur. He's got tons of heart and energy and love and care. And he's been struggling to stay consistent. He's, he's working from home right now. We've got coronavirus, you know, shut down, lockdown. He hasn't been on his regular routine. And I was pushing him on Monday. 
to, to get back on routine. Let's go. Basic things like clean up your apartment and, and make proper food for yourself and stay on your workout regimen. This should be the time where you stay disciplined. And his response was, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not, I'm not hearing it. I can't connect to the advice because I feel like you're just different than me. You're just wired differently. And that is the biggest cop out. Because it allows you to play small. It allows you to look at people who, who are doing the thing. It allows you to look at me or Lisa or anybody who you look up to, right? Steve or AP or Kanye or Howard. It allows you to look at these people that you love and respect and say, well, that they were just so magical and so different. And that's the reason why they won. And I, I'm just never, I'm never gonna be like that because they're built differently. You're giving yourself an out. You're giving yourself the biggest excuse and biggest out that most people fall into that trap of. And I told Alex, dude, there is no difference between you and me. Not on this. The difference is my willingness to step into discomfort. My willingness to say, this thing is happening right now is the greatest. You're sitting there thinking this is the hardest time of all. I'm thinking this is the greatest. That's the difference. The mindset shift, the training that's got in to making that mindset shift happens is the only difference. Not that I'm better or born different or have any other set of circumstances that is preventing you from winning like me. And so I told him this is a muscle that you build. Starting today, you start building that muscle, right? I'm just a little bit further ahead. I've done more, more work in the weight room of, of the mindset, right? And so it's unfair to compare where you're at right now to where I'm at. And it's unfair to compare where you're at, you guys watching to where Lisa's at or Steve Jobs or somebody else because you're not comparing their beginning and you might be at the beginning right now. And so it starts today. And I told Alec, it starts today. What can you do today to make yourself proud of your effort? The problem is you're not proud of your effort. The problem is you might be posting some things on Instagram and saying, look at what I did today, but you're going to sleep at night. You didn't pass the pillow test saying you're proud of yourself. What do you need to do today to be proud of your effort? He said, I got to I gotta clean up my condo because it's a giant mess. Like, great, go clean up your condo. And it took him way longer than he thought it was gonna take, but he did it. And then you know what magical things happened? He started making calls to the people he needed to make calls to. He started making videos for the videos he needed to make videos for. He started to have more energy and enthusiasm and, and, and hope and belief and confidence because he did the difficult thing. Now that's just one day. It's every day deciding to do that same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And then that's how you build the muscle. You don't build giant muscles by going to the gym once and working your face off. It's every single day going to the gym. Comparison to other people, I think is actually a good thing. I think you need it. I think it helps you. I think it serves you. The problem is most people look at other people, start feeling insecure and then kick themselves down. The key, is to kick yourself forward, not down. But you need that kick, otherwise you stay where you are. This is one of the reasons why I love Model Success, why I created all my YouTube channels and all the content that I've done and have the people behind me on the wall because I love looking at other people. I love learning from other people. I love seeing somebody do amazing things and say, that's what's possible. This is what's possible. I look at Les Brown as an example, and I think he's the greatest speaker of all time, at least that I've I've seen. I don't maybe maybe the ancient Greeks were better. I don't know, but but Les Brown, modern era on video, I think is the greatest speaker. And I look at that and say that's what's possible. Not that I can't do that. Here's what most people do: they look at Les Brown and say, "Well, I can't do that," and then they start feeling insecure. And I'm just a, I'm just an imposter trying to be like that now, and then they quit. And then they feel, they feel low with self-esteem and they, and they beat themselves up over it because they're not Les Brown. I look at Les Brown and say, that's what's possible. This is, what, this is what humans can actually accomplish and achieve. I want some of that. I want to get better. I want to drive and improve. Not to be the next Les Brown, but to be the best me. But this is what's possible. I look at David Goggins. Man, David Goggins. Look, he came out of nowhere. Who was David Goggins? Did you guys know David Goggins five years ago? No. He blew up out of nowhere because of the passion and intensity and truth of his message, right? I love that. And it's easy to say and look at that too. Well, look at how passionate David Goggins is and look how he blew up. I can never do that. I'm not as strong as him. I'm not as crazy as him. I don't have the same mindset as him. And so I can't do that. And you compare yourself to Goggins and then you say, well, I can't, I can't. And so you don't start. That's the problem. You should look at Goggins and say, look at what's possible. You could come from nowhere, nobody knowing who you are 
and in a short amount of time blow up because you have a message that matters. You can look at how passionate he is about his message. Every video, he's got insane passion, right? This guy, he's not gonna give you nice hugs and compliments, but he, he cares about his message, right? You can see that. And you can take that as, as what's possible. You can, you can care deeply about your message too and model David Goggins and, and apply that to make your message stronger and better. I think if you just were competing with yourself, I think you're actually gonna suck. I think, I think if you're the best at something and you don't have any competition, I think you actually suck. Uh, being the big fish in a small pond actually limits a lot of creativity, uh, limits your ability to go off and crush things. I think, I think it is. I think when you, even, even in animals, when you see animals going up against each other in a, in a race, when, when somebody's close, you work a little bit harder, right? I think, I think we need that in our ecosystem. The key though, again, is to make sure you're kicking yourself forward to say, this is what is possible. Not this person's so much better than me. I suck feeling insecure, feeling depressed. You need the kick. Just make sure you're kicking yourself forward, not down. Do you feel like some people are just, that entrepreneurs are born? I know you say that everybody has it in us to serve, but do you think there's some people that are just more prone or um, more gifted or more capable when it comes to um, achieving entrepreneurship? So I think, I think everybody has what I call Michael Jordan level talent at something. Okay. Uh, if you go religious, you know, everybody's a child of God. You were created, you are beautiful. You should be making something amazing in the world. You, right. you are not meant to be living this small life. Right. So if everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something, for some people that's being an entrepreneur. For mm -hmm. others, it might be being a teacher in the school, mm -hmm. right? It could be many things. Mm -hmm. How do you find it? Well, you need to explore. You need to taste, you need to test. You know, just like you found my videos, you were searching for motivation and you found them and then you, he's like, I like this. And mm -hmm. then you dove into it. A lot of times you can't think your way through these things because chances are the thing that you should be doing is very different than what is in your family and in your circle. Most of the time, the thing that you should be doing with your life is very different than what your parents did or what your brothers or sisters or cousins or community or church people there are doing. Yeah. And so it takes courage to go off and do it. Right. If, if you're if you're working with women who have a belief system of, well, women are supposed to be this way, mm -hmm. but then they know that, like, I don't want to be that. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm greater than that. I know I'm greater than that. Right. Yeah. To have the courage to chase that dream down, I think is important. And that's where I think people like you are a voice. What matters is that you're productive, that you get results, that you stop wasting time. Too many people default to thinking that if they just wake up an hour earlier, they're going to be way more productive. If you're not productive in a 16 hour day, what makes you think that you're gonna be more productive in a 17 hour day when you have less sleep? So this is a interesting message and timing for me right now because I I love beating the sun up. I love it. I, I love working. I like it's my default state. If Nina is off on a Friday night with her friends or something, 80% chance I'm working. I love it. I look forward to it. When I go close my eyes, I can't wait for it to be the next day. Like I'm pumped to go off and do the work. I recently did a sleep study and my doctor was concerned I wasn't getting enough quality sleep. So I went to go do a sleep study and the doctor, after going through the results, uh, told me that I need to be sleeping eight and a half hours to nine hours a night. And it, and it like super disappointed me. Eight and a half hours to nine hours? Are you kidding me? I, I'm trying to go from, I was trying to go from eight to seven. I was waking up after eight hours sleep and, and feeling still a little bit tired. And so that's why my doctor recommended even going to the sleep study. And I'm trying to figure out how do I hack it to get down to seven and still be fully functional, not, not be, you know, lazy and slow and not having my cognition. And uh, yeah, he said, I need to be sleeping eight and a half to nine hours a night. And he said, is that, is that normal? Like, are you not worried? He's like, no, as long as you're under 10, it's normal. People range from six to 10 and, and they're totally fine. Like this sucks. I mean, I'm not happy about it. I'm still looking at how can I hack my sleep more? And we've tried a lot. I have the chili pad. We've got, you know, meditation before sleeping. I'm lying on the bed of nails with the thing behind me, the pillow, the nail pillow. Uh, no, you know, phones or computers, X amount of time before going to bed, red light filters on everything, red <laughs> lights, no lights at all in the place, right? Like just these real red lights glowing around after, sunri after sunset, lots of it. 
cool down the temperature. I don't know, all of it. Don't eat past eight o'clock, no caffeine past two o'clock, all of it. I'm doing all of that stuff, all of it, right? Plus probably a lot more stuff. I've, I've studied and hacked away. I still believe there's a lot more hacking. I, I still wanna get it from nine to seven. But, but if I'm at nine and I need nine, I think you should get nine. I'm at the point now where if I wake up and the sun is still uh, not up, I stay in bed. And, and that's actually uh, boosting of confidence. It's like, okay, so I wake up and sun is, hasn't come up yet. Okay, this is hard, this is difficult. It's difficult for me to not get out of bed. I'm gonna stay in bed just because. Now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weird duck. So maybe this works for you, maybe it doesn't, but I was having a great conversation with uh, Jeremy, who's on my team, who, who I've invested in his business. He's helping companies scale their YouTube channels. And he was going through the same thing where he was feeling a little tired in the afternoon. He wanted to nap on some afternoons and that's never been me. So dude, you need to you just try uh, waking up without an alarm. And he, normally he's up at 4.30 in the morning or something. Um, so just wake up without an alarm and see how it goes. And he ended up sleeping for nine hours and hated, hating himself for doing it. It's like, dude, maybe you need nine hours. Like much more important than that extra hour or two is what are you doing during the day? If, if you're losing energy during the day and you want to nap every afternoon, you're not being productive. Like there's no way. Sleep and be productive. You need sleep to win. I think everybody should get a sleep test. I think it's a brutal experience. You don't, you barely sleep right? When you're there, you got stuff up your nose and a million sensors all over you, but to know how much sleep you actually need uh, and making sure that you're productive during the time that you are awake. That's the most important thing, that you are productive during the time that you are awake is way more important than if you wake up before the sun gets up. You haven't said that this is the thing. This is what I have to accomplish today. This is the mission that I am on and nothing is going to stop me. If you don't learn to focus on what's important to you, you'll never do important things and live your life reacting to what's important to other people instead. So I recently started a new business with one of my Thought Leadership Academy students, Jeremy. He came to my event last year. I was thinking about him on my tour this year and said, I wanna start a business with Jeremy around YouTube consulting. I get asked a lot, hey Evan, can you check out my channel? Hey Evan, can I work with you? Hey Evan, can I hire you for XYZ, looking at my channel, giving me ideas, mentoring, guiding me, and it's just not the business that I want to be in, but it is a business. And so I thought, Jeremy, Jeremy's going to come on board, he's going to do it. Now, when I recruited him and called him, he was not a YouTube expert. And I gave him the homework and said, listen, if you want to do this business together, it's got to be important to you. I'm halfway through my trip on my tour. I'm coming back in a month and a half. Here's what I need you to know by the end of the month and a half. And I gave him resources, I gave him videos, I gave him insights and analytics and said, you need to know all of this, know all of this. And then when I come back, if you're ready, we'll start the business. And he did, he focused, he made it his priority. He knew nothing about this. And all of a sudden he became an expert by every day, all day long, grinding to learn. By, by researching everybody who is an expert at this, understanding their methodologies, their best practices, looking through all my videos, my thumbnails, my strategies, all the things that I've talked about in the past, digesting it, kind of like the matrix, when Neo's in the matrix and, and he now he can learn Kung Fu and now he learns how to fly a helicopter, all of that stuff, that's basically what he did. And when it came back in a month and a half, I put him to the test and said, hey, let's do two free calls. We'll take two people from my community and say, hey, Free, free call, let's go. And he blew me away with how much he knew because he focused on it. Here's a guy who went from knowing almost zero to now being an expert to be able to really help give value to people. And now when we're looking at new people coming in, I, I barely have to do anything because he already knows what I'm gonna say. He already knows, he's already done the work, he's done the research because he spent that time on focused effort. And this is where I think a lot of people feel like they're never gonna win because you may not have had the expertise, you don't have the education. It doesn't take long to become an expert. It's just focused work that you're passionate about. Focused work, you could quickly become in a matter of months an expert at something if you just focus in on it and dedicate your life to that thing that you love. You can easily pass people who are experts at something who don't love their thing but because you're willing to take it on, you're willing to absorb. Think about when you went to school, how much of the information you had in your head, but you had to read over the page four times. <laughs> so you're at the same page four, five, six times because you got lost, you got distracted. That's not focused work because you don't love that thing. I think judging yourself is actually great. I think you need it. I think it's healthy. I think people should be harder on themselves. 
The problem is people can't handle being even a little bit harder on themselves because they're already at the point of being depressed or even suicidal. The secret starts with self-love. Your self-love has to equal your self-criticism. You have to be your biggest fan as well as your biggest critic. The root problem isn't judging yourself, it's not loving yourself. One of the challenges to think of being human is we are social animals, we're social creatures. We rely on each other, we need each other, we wanna belong, we wanna be part of tribes, we wanna do things together, right? We wanna be around other people. So that makes us wanna fit in. And that makes us play small, worry about what people think about us because if we don't do the thing that they want us to do, they might judge us and kick us out of the tribe. The good news is there's so many different tribes you can do now, right? There's so many different people that it may not be your, your friends that you have right now. It may not be your parents or your family or your community right now, but whatever you want to do, there is a group of people who believe the same things you believe, who think the same way you think. And I think one of the healthiest things that you can do is whenever you feel the eyes of potential judgment, for something that you want to do, you have to go off and do it just to show yourself. When you have lost control of your outcomes, remember that you can still control your actions. You are not in control of the market, of your customers, of your revenue, but you can still control how and where you spend your time. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's because you feel like you have no control. We're going to fix that in this video. So as I'm recording this video, we're in the middle of the coronavirus outbreak. We're in quarantine. I'm here in my place in Toronto, Canada, filming content like I normally do, but my business is hurting. All the businesses that I'm involved in are hurting. So if you look at my YouTube channel as an example, the views were down, the, the revenue rates on advertising is way down because people aren't advertising right now. Uh, my speaking business is zero. I'm, I was supposed to be speaking multiple times this month. It's all to zero. My book tour, <laughs> not happening. And so all of this chaos, to so look at my Toronto Dance Salsa business, where we teach people how to dance salsa, the largest dance school in Canada, maybe North America for salsa dancing, and shut down, zero, nothing, not happening, right? I mean, we can't have classes during coronavirus. People are not allowed to touch. So our business was shut down by the government. And that sucks. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to, to get involved in chaos and say, oh my God, this is, it's all over. Everything's spiraling out of control. I can't control what happens with coronavirus. I can't control what's happening with my students and whether they're going to come back or not. All I can control is what I do. All I can control is how I show up every day. I can still make videos. I can still plan. I can still create content. I can still reach out to my team and, and ask how they're doing and motivate and inspire them. I could still do activities every day. Where people get lost is getting overwhelmed by just staying in their head, saying, oh my God, this is never gonna work out, I don't know what to do, and you're just stuck in a spiral of thinking instead of actually creating, and getting lost in a news cycle and, and seeing what's happening and checking in 80 times a day to see what the new death toll numbers are, coronavirus, doesn't help you. There's one thing to be informed, and, and it's great to be informed, and you need to make informed decisions, amazing. But to be overwhelmed by it, to cloud your thinking so that all you're doing is thinking and not have enough action, that just creates a really strong negative cycle and spiral downwards. Because when you're feeling out of control, the way out of it is to control your actions again, to control your thinking again. But if you're not actually taking any action, then you never actually solve the problem. And so it's doing the best you can with what you have. I am still in control of my time. I can still wake up today and make videos for you. I can still wake up today and do my Instagram stories. I can still wake up today and plan what we're going to do with my salsa business once we get out of the coronavirus, because this is not going to last forever. You can still wake up today and choose to be productive on the things that will best drive value for your business and for your customers today. Your brain is keeping you afraid and preventing you from achieving everything that you want. Because your brain is practical. It's logical. It only understands a world that currently exists. And if you want to change the world and you don't learn how to hack your brain, you are going to play scared for life. So I was trying to think about, as I was watching this video, what the when was the last time that I felt really overwhelmingly scared? Like, I might not be able to do this. I can't do this. I'm not capable. I'm not worthy. I, I don't think I, I'm, I'm going to deliver a good job. And the, the only idea that came to mind recently of a big thing was when I was speaking at the event in Phoenix. And... I was invited by Brendan Burchard and Dean Graziosi and I was speaking at their event and before me was Eric Thomas on day one and I was the last speaker on the last day. And I remember 
the day of, I was pacing backstage about an hour, 45 minutes before the actual event. I'm, I'm there, I'm pacing, I'm walking back and forth. Brendan Burchard said he's gonna watch my entire speech and, and give me feedback after, which only adds to the pressure. And there was a moment where I blanked out. There was a moment, maybe 10 minutes before I went on stage, I'm standing backstage and I blank out. I blank, like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm gonna talk, what am I gonna talk about right now? I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about right now. It's been a long time since I felt that level of desperation, insecurity, overwhelm, because usually as soon as something, as soon as I hear myself saying, this is hard, this is difficult, uh, I, I say, okay, let's go do it. The challenge in this situation was I couldn't just get up on stage whenever I wanted. And so I'm, I'm left sitting there walking backstage thinking, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What if I don't win? What if I don't, what if I don't give a great performance? What if I let everybody down, which is my greatest fear? What if I let the audience down and Brendan down and Dean down? And I totally, I just forgot what I'm going to say. How do I even start my presentation? I'm going to wake, I'm going to, I'm going to get up on stage and just face plant. It was this, I don't know, minute of just real desperation a feeling like oh my gosh i'm gonna get up there and suck i don't know what i'm gonna say and then the thing that caught me and i'm so grateful that it did is like the training the training this is how you train yourself the training came in i said what are you doing you're evan carmichael let's go and that may sound super egotistical but I think, I think the self-criticism only works when it's based off a foundation of self-love. Like, I think you need to celebrate yourself more. I think you need to recognize yourself more. Not bragging on social media that you did some fake goal that you know didn't take a lot of work, but you might get some accolades for from your friends and people following you. I'm talking about what do you tell yourself? Like, when you walk past yourself in the mirror, do you see a rock star? Do you see a stud? Do you see somebody who's gonna go change the world? Most people is no. And, it's, and if it's a yes, it's not consistent. And so I think doing the work to tell yourself that you're amazing, I think that should be a default answer every time you're nervous, is to say, I'm filling your name. I'm you, your name, right? I'm Evan Carmichael, let's go. And that motivated me to then instantly remember what the thing was. It wasn't that I forgot what I was gonna say, I was just too stressed out and blocked that I couldn't actually get through to what I was supposed to go out and, and talk about. And so that shift in my state um, by telling myself, I'm Evan Carmichael, let's go, allowed me to connect to it and then go off and, and deliver, um, at least what I thought was a pretty great uh, speech and event. You are a product of your environment. The people around you are keeping you exactly where you are. And if you love where you are, then keep with those people. But if you want more out of life, if you've got bigger dreams, bigger ambitions, then you're going to have to let some of those takers go. Now, I've been pretty fortunate that I haven't had any real takers in a long time in my life. But here's the thing, it's easy to recognize the people who are really negative in your life and, and want to eliminate them. But then once you've done that, you'll still find that there's this middle ground. There's these people who bring you energy, who are amazing, who lift you up, who are, are awesome to be around. And there are people who are negative that you cut out of your life. But then there's that middle ground of people who they're just okay. They're not bad. They're not great. It's just okay. And if you want to raise the quality of your life, if you want to raise your standards, you can't be hanging around, at least spending most of your time with people who make you feel just okay. So I got back from an event with Tony Robbins uh, not that long ago, I think it was last year, when I went with my friend Mark Drager. And Tony at the end of his events has you do this fire walk. And he lays out these you know, coals, these hot burning coals across the parking lot and you have to walk, uh, walk over it. And he has you sing cool moss, cool moss and it gets you all excited and amped up to ready to cross the walk. And the idea is you're doing something that you're afraid of. You're doing something that you're scared of and to show yourself that you're capable of doing difficult things. Mark and I decided to actually skip the fire walk because we rushed home and I did the real fire walk, which was in my life letting go of a number of people who were just okay. It wasn't that they were bad or toxic or big takers from my life, it was just okay. And I realized if I'm spending all my time on things that are just okay, things, 
people, projects, ideas that are just okay, that make you feel just okay, right? It's good is the enemy of great. If it's really bad, you're gonna let it go. But if it's good, you just keep it around. And then suddenly the good becomes your standard. Your good becomes acceptable. When did good become acceptable? That's what you need to draw the line in the sand and see the ideas that are just good. I need to eliminate from my life. The people that are just good, I need to either eliminate or spend less time with them. To leave room for the things that are great, extraordinary, excellent, raising your standards, making you believe more in yourself and your capabilities. And so coming back from that event, not even, it was on that day, not even coming back, it was on that day, I went back to my Airbnb with Mark and, and I let go of mo multiple people in my life. And not let go and say you suck, just basically moving on. And, and that allowed me to have a lot more momentum now. Now I had a lot more free time that allowed me to focus on things that would build me up, that would explode my growth forward. And it's been a crazy year. It's been, a, it's been basically a year. November 2018 was when that happened. So now it's been almost a full year. Uh, I guess by the time this video comes out, it's been a full year. Wow, that's crazy. It's been a full year since that happened. You have to let go of the takers first, and then you have to start thinking about, are the people around you just good? Are your ideas just good? And slowly start getting rid of those ones. The projects, the tasks, look at your calendar. What's just good in your life? And get rid of it, and leave room and focus on the things that are extraordinary, that fill you up, that build you up, that make you feel amazing, because you deserve it. And all of your great work, all of your great activities, all of your great momentum, your great impact is gonna come on the other side of doing amazing things. You will never create something amazing when you're working on something good, when you feel good, and definitely not when you feel bad. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So as a special celebration, if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more rules from Gary Vaynerchuk, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I don't think anybody can work hard, hard, unless they like it. I was the least hard working student. I was selling lemonade and shoveling snow and washing cars and selling baseball cards every day.